What's going on guys? Today we're going to talk about something very important. The important aspect of having the proper mindset before you start your business. I'm going to go back in time and talk about a period where I had the absolute worst mindset, but because I was in that point where I didn't know what I didn't know, I had no clue to what I was doing. I was in the military and I was trying to start a side business. And I tried this not once, not two times, not three times, not four times, but five times and they all failed. They all failed. And I, I look at who I was back then. I didn't understand business. I didn't understand e-commerce. I didn't understand many of the things that make a business successful. I had no clue. You may find yourself in that similar thought process. And this is why what I like to consider template businesses are so powerful right now. Now, what is a template business? That's your Toro, your Airbnb, your Amazon FBA, any business where they remove the process of how to get customers. That's a template business and they're very popular because there are many people who want to start a business. They don't know where they are. They don't have an understanding of what they're doing. There is no knowledge. There is no framework to what should they do. So they jump into a template business and I'm going to explain something to you. And this is one of the things that I have gone through a few times in my business career where I'm running business. I'm doing okay. I'm making money and then something happens where I don't like something about the business. And it's not like a small thing. It's a pretty large thing where I just don't like certain aspects of the business. I'm not, it, it, it becomes somewhat depressing, but this is one of the things I have learned with my 25 years of being in business. One of the things that can happen to you when you get into one of these template businesses is you could find yourself in a position where you have a business that's up, running, making money, but you don't like it. And that's a hard thing to do because take putting in the time, effort, money to start a business that you don't like. And then you're going out and you get a job that you don't like, that you hate. I feel that taking the time, effort, and energy to put money into a business is substantially worse than having a job that you don't like. You can just quit your job and find another one. But see, here's the thing that happens with the business. You have the business, it's up and running, it's making money, and you just simply hate it. You absolutely hate it. I remember listening to this YouTube channel where this girl who had made millions in her business put out this statement. I was happier when I was broke and living in a two bedroom apartment than I am now. This is a person that has clearly got into a business that they don't like, they don't enjoy, and it's not really good for them. And this is one of the things that's gonna happen with the template businesses if you make it long enough, because another thing that happens with the template business, they're crowded, they're saturated. So you could be in the template business and next thing you find yourself struggling, you find yourself in a bad situation because you have gotten into a template business that is saturated, full, crowded. So if you could get to that point where you're making money, you're living your life, you're running your business and you don't like it, that would be somewhat of a success because most people don't make it there. And that's where I found myself many years ago, running businesses that I just did not enjoy. And then when I got here to YouTube, it was 2009, 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I was here on YouTube seven years 
and I was pushing my first digital product, making money A to Z with self storage unit auctions. And at the seven year mark, I just didn't like it. Now this was a business, I thoroughly enjoyed the storage business, but I didn't like this business of being on YouTube, having the audience that I had, going through that process. So one day it, it got to the point where I was like, I had a very large Facebook group, I had Facebook stuff, I had a lot of stuff going on. And I just flipped the switch and said, hey, anybody wants this Facebook group, I'll give it to them. So I gave the Facebook group away. I switched my content on YouTube. And let me put this in here. You should subscribe, you should hit the bell notification button, and you should like this video and you should watch this video three times because I'm gonna give you a lot of tips, strategies, and advice for you to be successful in your business. Now, here's the tip with YouTube. Once again, I was in that space where I didn't know what I didn't know and what I should have done, and I didn't do it, I should have started another YouTube channel that was more integrated with starting a business. I should have started a new YouTube channel from scratch versus piling on the content to this older established YouTube channel, which worked part time, but long term, it was a bad decision. And this is one of the things that I will share with you with my digital e-commerce background. So I just started new content, new videos, new strategies. I started doing a lot of things very differently than I used to do them. and. One of the things that I need to put in here, let's say you're sitting at home, you're watching this video and you want to start a business, but you don't know what kind of business you want to start. You want to start something, but you don't know what. And that gives you incredible pause. That gives you incredible gravity. That gives you, because essentially, it, I'm going to share something with you. You could be in this position for decades. I want to start some. I don't know what to start because when you're in that position of trying to start something, but you don't know what you want to do, you have no strong inclination. You could literally be in that spot for years to decades because you haven't moved forward. And the mindset is adequately important because when you have the proper mindset, it makes running your business, doing stuff in your business much, much easier than just, hey, I have a business, I'm out here trying to make some money. That mindset is not gonna carry you through the ups and downs and ups and downs of your business. It's just simply not. So how does one get a vigorous mindset? How does one get a mindset that is going to carry them through the trials and tribulations of starting and having a business. Guess what? I got tricks, strategies, and the tools for you. Number one, there is something in your business life that you like to do, or there's something in your life you should like to do. There should be a hobby or something. And I'm going to talk to the people who have hobbies and I'm going to talk to the people who don't. So what I want you to do is take an evening, turn off the television, turn off your phone, and sit there and think deeply about the things that you like to do. Think very deeply on these things that you enjoy doing, these things that bring you a great deal of satisfaction. Now, I want you to write them down, and I want you to take a sheet of paper and put down the things that I like to do at the top and just List it. And this is the thing, you cannot censor anything. There's a guy who's making a million dollars a year teaching people how to do handstand. So do not censor what you like to do. Do not censor just everything you like to do, whether it's cooking, traveling, whatever. Whatever you like to do, put that on that list. And then after you create that list, put that list in the drawer somewhere and ponder it. Wait three to five days and then go back at that list and see if you can add some more stuff. And 
Once again, three to five days after you create the first list, you go back, you add some more stuff, and then you wait another three to five days and see if you can add some more stuff. Now, here's the thing. The easy stuff, the stuff that's at the top of your mind, that's probably not going to be the thing that's going to make the money. But the things that you struggle, the things that you have to really push for, really dig for, that could be the thing that can make you some money. So day two, and day three of adding to this list are gonna be very important because see, you're gonna actually have to think. You're actually gonna to have to put thoughts and you're gonna actually have to generate concepts and ideals about what you like. And then day two, day three, these are the things that you can start building your business. If you're a person who doesn't have any hobbies, if you're a person who doesn't have any skill sets, your path is going to be longer. What, you, what I would advise you to do is to enlist in hobbies, jobs, and skill sets that you have very strong interest for one to two years, because that's going to give you enough time to say, hey, I really like this, or hey, I really don't like this. And once again, after that one to two years, then the exercise I just gave to the people who have hobbies and passions and stuff, you are going to do that same exercise because now you have a framework and you have some experience because one of the things that I consistently see in today's world is a lot of people do not have experiences. And I'm gonna bring up the subject of my Uncle James. My Uncle James, he, was, he retired from the Navy. He retired as an underwater welder from General Dynamics and he was a very interesting character. And this man was a cook in the Navy. And this man can turn the most mundane, ordinary dishes into celebrity, extravaganza type stuff. I'll tell you a story. One summer he came down, he was with us, and uh, he said, well, you got in the kitchen? Well, I'm hungry. And I was like, we just got some pork and beans, pork and beans, hot dogs, onions, tomatoes, mustard, and that. Right, doesn't sound like anything appetizing. So he went ahead, he cracked open the beans, he put some mustard, some pepper, some salt, some onions in the beans, then he diced up the hot dogs. And it was like these ordinary things became extravagant. They became, it literally blew our minds that this ordinary food could, because putting the onions, the salt, the pepper, and the mustard in the beans, it gave it a new flavor and it was just amazing. And this is, I bring up my Uncle James because he grew up in an era where people had hobbies and talents and things like that. So this man knew how to cook. He knew how to do underwater welding. He was a very curated person that had a lot of passions. And because he retired from the Navy and he retired from General Dynamics, he was getting a retirement check from the military, a retirement check from General Dynamics, and social security. He is what they used to call a triple dipper. I think his retirement money was like eight or nine thousand dollars. Yes, eight or nine thousand dollars. And this is in the 80s, which was substantial money, which required, which allowed him to do and live however he wanted to live. Now, I bring that up because there are many of you out there who are just, you want to start a business. You want to start doing some stuff, but you don't know where to start. And that's a very hard thing to help people start with because you, you have no clue to where you want to be, to what you want to do, to what you want to get started, to what you want to build. And this is the, these are the people who typically fall head first into these template businesses. And let me tell you something about these template businesses. I'm not mentioning any names, but there are some real estate investors who got into the Airbnb space and they went hard and they started setting up workshops and they started teaching people how to get into the Airbnb. Recently, they put up a video talking about why they're gonna leave Airbnb. And they've only been in Airbnb space two years and they already see what's happening. They already see what's coming up. They're go they have a process of putting on their own website, running their own advertising, because they see what's happening with Airbnb. After two years, two years. And I'm just sitting there, because here's the thing. Right now, if you have Airbnbs and very popular, high tourist destinations, you can make a lot of money. But if you have an Airbnb in Ohio, in the hood, 
probably not going to make that much money. And one of the things that's happening is that people are teaching how to get in Airbnbs and how to set up these Airbnb hotspots without a very critical and important aspect to where you should buy your Airbnb. Critically important, extremely important for anyone who wants to set up an Airbnb business. And one of the things that they're doing is leaving out the very important details to the things that they should put in their Airbnb and the things that they should not put in their Airbnb. And once again, if you pick the right Airbnb location, you set up the right type of Airbnb, you can make money, no doubt about it. But the thing is, I'm here in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm seeing a ton of people who have just got into the Airbnb space and they're now putting these fully furnished houses on Zillow as long-term rentals with an exaggerated rental rate. And this is one of the things that happens when you fall into the template business model with little regard to how to get customers, how to build a business, how to be stable, how to actually do something from the reality of building a business. And we're gonna be talking a lot about that. So what I want you to do is subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification, hit all, watch this video two to three times, and we're going to get into a whole different level of training and concepts. Because here's what I'm getting ready to do. I am going to start the training all over. I've had some older training that's not applicable to this new business environment. So I'm gonna start all over with brand new training for the people who want to get in to the brand new training. So I'm gonna be putting up a list of something probably since it's the middle of March, I'm probably gonna start this in April. So be on the lookout for that and I will announce that and I will let you guys get full access to this new training. So stick around because one of the things that you don't understand with having the proper mindset is that's that really as i sit here and i think about it that really is a course unto itself that is a situation that is a process unto itself because i'll be talking about mindset a lot more and the importance of having the right mindset when it comes to starting a business, setting a business up and making money. Because one of the things that you have to understand, you must have the proper mindset to start it and you must dig deep in that mindset and you must hold on to that mindset as you go through all of the layers for your business. And one of the things that you have to understand, and this is very important, and I can tell you with 25 years of experience that having the proper mindset is devastatingly important to the success of your business as you get into your business space. It's incredibly important, it's incredibly powerful, and it's incredibly in these grand scale of schemes I would put it as a number one for you to start whatever business. It doesn't matter whatever business you want. It doesn't matter. It's important that you have this proper mindset to get into any business. My name is Glendon Cameron. I'm here for you probably every other day. So there will be about 14 to 15 videos per month. So go ahead, get in and watch all of the videos, even some of the older videos if you're brand new, so you can get the proper mindset so you can be successful in starting, running, and operating your business.